for example, just to really illustrate what's going on. So let's say we have hydro, hydroiodic acid and, and this, this carbon anion. So we know it can protonate this guy, forming this iodide and this, this protonated carbon. So we know this reaction will react and, and eventually reach equilibrium. So at equilibrium, will the vast majority of the molecules be in the form of these reactants or products? Well, we know how we do this. We look at the pK of the acid on the left, and we find the pK of the acid on the right. And remember what this pK tells us. The lower the pK, the stronger the acid. So we know this is a very strong acid. So what does that tell us? That tells us when it reacts as an acid, it forms a very stable conjugate base. And that's why it's a strong acid. So therefore, we know this iodide is very stable. While this guy has a high pK, so it's a weak acid. So we know it's a weak acid, so therefore when it acts as an acid and forms a conjugate base, it forms a very unstable conjugate base. So therefore, we now, based on these pKa's, now we are able to determine that this is very stable and this is very unstable. So that tells us once this reaction reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules should be in the form of these products. But again, how do we quantify that? Again, first we find the pK of this reaction, and we know it's super easy. We, we, look on the, we find the acid on the left, find its pKa, then we find the acid on the right, find its pKa, then we take the pKa of the acid on the left and subtract it by the pKa of the acid on the right, and that gives you the pKa of this reaction. So if we did that, we'd essentially, we would plug in those pKa's, and we would know this reaction has a pKa of negative 64. But we know instead of dealing with pKa's, we can plug the pKa into this equation and find out the Ka of this reaction. So now we know this reaction would have a Ka of 10 to the 64. So what does that tell us? Well, we know how we use the Ka and Kq equations. We, take the, we let this reaction react, reach equilibrium concentrations. We take those concentrations at equilibrium, plug them into this equation, and that will give us the Ka of this reaction, the equilibrium constant of this reaction. So because we have such a high equilibrium constant, that tells us that once this reaction reacts, it reaches equilibrium, we take those concentrations at equilibrium, and we get this huge ratio. We know at equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules are in the products, relative to in the form of the reactants. And that's what this, this equilibrium constant tells us. At, this tells us, the equilibrium constant tells us the ratio of products relative to reactants at equilibrium. So the point is, when this reaction reacts, virtually all the molecules are going to be in the form of these products, and very little reactants are going to be made, and that's what this Ka tells us. So base, as long as you know the Ka's of the acids involved, you can use them to, to quantify how many reactants you'll have relative to products. So we know this reaction at equilibrium will virtually be all in the form of products.